right. Welcome to Bates Botanical Boot Camp. So we're doing some houseplant Q&A troubleshooting with Vanessa. And Caroline. Yes. So we're ready for all of your questions, mm-hmm. concerns, things that might be going on with your plants. Um, while we're waiting for people to come in, we'll just do a little talk about what we have sitting here. Things that we've been yeah. getting in recently here at Bates Nursery that are fun and exciting to add to your plant collection. Yes. It is cold outside, but it's warm in our greenhouse. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so one of my new favorites is like this guy. The, this one is a Sansevieria Lauren. It's very cute and yellow, and it's big, and I like that. Sansevierias are just like probably some of the most easygoing houseplants, and this one's like nice and and bright to brighten up a dark corner. Yeah, brighten up that winter weather, Mm -hmm. those winter blues. It looks like sunshine. It does absolutely (laughs) looks like sunshine. I love it. And her name is Lauren. (laughs) And her name is Lauren. One of my favorites is going to be this kangaroo palm. Not palm, sorry, fern. Ooh, (laughs) kangaroo paw fern. Yeah, kangaroo paw fern. It's nice. It kind of looks like a lovely head of hair. I would say it's super Medusa's easy. Medusa's hair. Medusa's <laughs> hair. That's right. Very snake-like. Pretty easy to take care of. Um, can be a low light or near a window that doesn't get direct sunlight. And it's got these cool little arm, like kind of jazzy fingers that are going to come off and grow yeah. around the pot, which is super exciting. And it's pretty sturdy as far as ferns go. Like I had one for a really long time and that I did okay it. with. I didn't kill it. Speaking of ferns, well, I forgot it outside. <laughs> we've got indoor fern care coming up yes. soon with the two of us. Mm-hmm. I believe it's in two weeks. Mm-hmm. Tyler, do you know? Coming I'll up soon. just keep talking and I'll bring it up. Okay, we'll keep <laughs> on going. But we're going to cover caring for ferns, mm-hmm. different types of ferns, mm-hmm. what you need to do if it starts looking sad. Mm-hmm. I personally love ferns. I'll be the example of what not to do to your ferns. I still love ferns. I've seen this fern though, and it was. Oh yeah, that's, that's going to mm. be January 29th. January 29th for Three indoor weeks. fern care. Two weeks? I don't know. <laughs> two two and a half weeks. It's soon, but you can check out our Bates <laughs> calendar on our website. It's going to have all of the webinars listed. Mm-hmm. Before but, that, we'll have succulents. Ooh, yes, yeah. January 22nd. Definitely one of my favorites. And grow lights. Vanessa yeah. herself mm-hmm. is going to tell us all about that. January 15th next week yeah are you ready i'm getting ready i've been doing some more research she's always ready though but yeah grow lights are i mean i love succulents i love cacti but i do not have enough natural light for them so i started doing grow lights yeah and now like yeah if you put grow lights in like you can do plants anywhere anywhere you, you can fit so many plants in so your many house more plants just We're- replace all your light fixtures with grow bulbs. which i have done with some are we ready a, to start? A question in from uh, Facebook. Tell Ooh. us about the Monstera. Ooh, this big old totem guy. I love these. But yeah, we have a couple of them in right now. So this one's um, Monstera Adansoni, or like Swiss cheese wine. You have them like mounted on these big totems, so they'll climb they'll up They'll grow vertically. up that, yeah. And you don't even really have to train them that much. They just mm. kind of yeah, grab attach on. themselves. But yeah. Super easy to care mm-hmm. for. Um, I'm not sure if you've tried mm-hmm. a Monstera before. Maybe you have like five. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, super easy. You can let them dry out. I mean, mine yeah. dries out almost completely between watering yeah. because I'm pretty bad at watering. That's why I have mostly cacti. <laughs> well, and ferns. So yeah. I, it doesn't really make any sense. But yeah, we make do. Yeah. But yeah, these guys like, I don't know, bright, indirect light. Mm-hmm. I think they like a little more water than the regular Monsteras. Yeah, I would say so. A little bit more, but yeah, they're nice and easy and cute. They're very cute. Mm-hmm. Plants are your best friends right now. Yes, they brighten up. Those what was dark it we had days. in the newsletter that David Bates said? Oh, silent. Our, our silent, silent companions. companions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they are. And I have so many. You have more. I have too right. many. Ty, do we have another question coming in? Um. Well, let's let's go ahead and get into it. Um. Yeah. Ooh. Right off the top, uh, what pests can you battle and what pests are so resilient you should toss the whole plant? I mean, you can battle really any pest. It just depends on how much effort Mm -hmm. and sometimes money you want to put in. And it kind of depends on like what pests are on what plant too. So like um, probably I would say one of the most stubborn ones is like mealybugs. Um, They're (sighs) sneaky. They're little and they're really good at hiding out in plants. Um, I've had cacti and succulents for years, and they're really prone to them, unfortunately. Yeah. So, 
They those guys can be tough. They can be tricky because mm. they can get like Vanessa was yeah. saying. They can get into the crevices. Like I have a, a crimson queen Hoya that yeah. I keep thinking they're gone and they're not. Yeah. You notice some like hiding where the leaf meets the stem. Mm-hmm. So I mean, they're, like wedged up in the new growth. Mm-hmm. I use neem oil on mine. Yeah, neem. I'll kind of like alternate like neem and insecticidal mm-hmm. soap if it's something really stubborn. Um, but yeah, I mean. The only thing like I've just where I've just chucked and like not even tried to treat it was like, I think, oh, I had a viral viral like mosaic virus on one of my philodendrons. Like if it's viral, like you just got to chop it and chuck it. But yeah, yeah. Most insect pests like you can get a handle on like with yeah neem oil and And scales pretty easy, although it does take over quickly, but it's Mm. easy to kill and it'll stay Mm -hmm. on and you can just kind of scrape it off of your plant. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, prevention is going to be the key. So like always check your plants regularly, especially Mm -hmm. like new arrivals. Like sometimes it takes a little while for you to like notice like pests that may have like snuck along. Um, A good thing if you had space to do Mm -hmm. it is to kind of quarantine plants, new plants when you bring them in, especially if you buy them from the Internet or from Mm -hmm. like a you know, seller on Facebook or something, if you've got some space where you can just Mm. keep that plant for, I would say, a good two to three weeks, because sometimes it takes a minute to see, Mm. then it's not going to spread to your other plants. And Mm. that becomes a whole new battle when they just jump or, you know, crawl their way to something else. Yeah, It's tricky. I had a bad time with spider mites last year. (laughs) Mm. Mm -mm. Uh, how do you know if you have spider mites? Oh, that was a nice Perfect. lead-in. Yeah. I mean, you'll see little little signs, like mm. there'll be some small little webs. Yeah, it's subtle, too. Like, it definitely, last year, like, was my first year with houseplants, like, in the winter. And I did not know, like, what was happening. My leaves are starting to look, like, kind of faded, almost a little speckly. I thought I saw, like, some webbing, maybe, on the undersides. Um, but the actual mites themselves are tiny. So like definitely look for the webbing. That's usually mm-hmm. a giveaway or like you'll see sometimes like little white granules, like their molts will be sticking to usually the undersides of leaves. Yeah. But you want to yeah. hold that plant up and yeah. look up. Some plants are definitely a lot more susceptible to spider mites than others, like all the prayer plants, uh, calatheas. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I've had some on my yeah. Hoyas. Yeah. That Hoya. Mm-hmm. Or like, ooh, honestly, the alocasias too, the African masks, oh, those yeah. are real susceptible to them they too. They can see it over here, mm-hmm. but that's the plant we're talking about right now. But yeah, so yeah, if you have plants that are known to be Which one grown, was that again? Oh, yeah, the African mask uh, alocasia. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, if you've got plants that are prone to them, like definitely inspect them regularly. I always check all my prayer plants like at least once a week in the winter mm-hmm. because, yeah, spider mites love low humidity. Yes, they so do. So that's when they can really sneak up on you. But luckily there are treatments mm-hmm. and you They're, can come here to get some yeah. and ask more questions mm-hmm. about it, too, if you do yeah. find a problem. Yeah. Speaking of more questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jennifer uh, here asks, is it best to buy potting soil made for houseplants or does it really matter? And uh, number two, is it better to cut dead leaves off with scissors or pinch them off? I would say buy potting mix yeah. for houseplants because it's formulated for being mm-hmm. inside for drainage. Um, and a lot of the outdoor mixes hold a heavy, lot of water. Yeah, it's heavy. Want. Yeah. And then sometimes it'll have, you know, it's like more compost, things that can be like a little bit more uh, fragrant indoors. <laughs> oh, yeah. Which nobody wants. Yeah, nobody wants that. And then I'd say with removing dead mm-hmm. leaves, I always use a sharp um, pair of scissors or yeah. even a knife because mm-hmm. pinching it off is going to like Get it a doesn't little messy leave like sometime, a, yeah. like a clean cut. Or sometimes you pull off like more than just. Or you pull leaf. the whole plant, <laughs> half the plant out, which I've done before. When I'm I've like, I don't need to you. get my scissors. I'll just yeah. pull this yeah. out. Yeah. Use the scissors. Then you killed half your plant and you're sad. Yeah. But yeah, it leaves like a nice clean edge and it's mm-hmm. just like you can get more of it off. Yeah, and you can get thing. like down in there to get it. Cool. Mm. Um. Our Facebook commenter, Brittany, said, I need, a, I need a sturdy fern in my life. Mine are barely hanging on. Sturdy fern. Yeah. I would say, at least for me, mm-hmm. the sturdiest I've come across is going to be the blue star. Ooh, yeah, those are good. Or the bear paw, which looks very similar to mm-hmm. this kangaroo, but it's a nice blue shade and a little mm-hmm. bit larger. Now, that one can take a little bit more sunlight mm-hmm. and can take almost completely dry soil. So if you're 
maybe having problems with watering, that's a good one to go yeah. for. Yeah, Blue Star Bird's Nest ferns mm -hmm. aren't are like pretty big and like robust too. Um, and yeah, mine's like mine's done pretty well for me. They can also handle like getting a little bit drier in between. Um, and yeah, and I found the kangaroo paw ferns to be pretty sturdy too. Like all those epiphytic mm -hmm. ferns with their little like creeping roots. So yeah, that you know, rabbit's like, foot, rabbit. all the foot paw ferns yeah. really, they're great. With their little fingers. <laughs> and they're cool to watch grow. Yeah. And you can have so many different options of how you like grow them and pot them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those tend to be a little hardier. Mm -hmm. Maiden hair, don't do it. Don't do it. They're so beautiful. They are, but they're so finicky. No. Alrighty. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Following up from the December live webinar, when are we getting Garden Club flag? Merch, merch, merch. Oh, when are we? Yeah. Yes, oh. we all need We're working on it. We mm -hmm. are working on it. We were actually talking about merch this morning, some Garden Club merch, Bates yeah. Nursery hoodies. Um, mm -hmm. I know Tyler behind the mic here mm -hmm. is working hard on getting something going. Mm -hmm. So maybe like we'll have something within a month. Yeah. I just realized my mic was off when I said that question. <laughs> oh. oh, so you guys don't know what was asked. I mean, you probably okay. heard it barely. Read it again, Tyler, because you did oh, great yeah. without the mic. Yes. Following up from the S December live, when are we getting Garden Club swag? Merch, merch, merch. Please distract mm -hmm. me from this week's insanity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I would love patches. That would be cool. Yeah. Haven't thought of that until this oh my moment. Gosh, yeah. little leaf patches. That you can put on your jean jacket with yes. all your other cool patches. Mm -hmm. Yep. That would We're be working fine. on it. We should think of a cool group name. Mm -hmm. We'll work on that too. Yeah. Uh, and, and if you have any suggestions, you know, feel free to submit them. Yes. Uh, info at BatesNursery.com mm -hmm. is a great way to do that. Mm -hmm. You can also DM us mm -hmm. on yes. our social platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, I run those, and so does uh, Anora. In Hi, the Anora. Background. Hi, Anora. Anora's here moderating. Yay. <laughs> they do great. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we'd love to hear your feedback on that. Um, somebody just said it, it appears you have a fiddle leaf uh, with a, a bare trunk is that normal growth uh, mine um, loves outside but loses leaves inside in the winter is that normal I mean they yeah. are going to shed like my fiddle leaf <laughs> looking a little sad right now oh. <laughs> But yeah, now the little trunk, like for the ones that we have in stock, those are pruned to kind of mm -hmm. give it more of that tree shape. Um, but a lot of ficuses, it's pretty natural for them to lose like lower leaves, especially, you know, transitioning from like into winter or, um, you know, if you move them outside for summer, a little bit of leaf drop is fine. Mm -hmm. um, if it, you know, starts extending towards like newer leaves, that can be indicative of some issues. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just a couple lower leaves. No worries. Just and also you can just trim mm -hmm. them off yourself mm -hmm. if you want a more tree form um, fiddle leaf. Yeah. Like this one right in front of us bambina. or beside. Oh, oh it's super cute. Mm -hmm. It is. <laughs> Um, what are some less popular houseplants that are actually really dope and deserve some hype? Ooh. Less popular. I mean, this one right here, our little fire stick kind of pencil yeah. cactus. I don't, we don't sell a lot of those, but I have three mm -hmm. at home that I absolutely love. One of them has, if I hadn't topped it, would probably be about 14 feet tall at this point um it's pretty big <laughs> it's, it's giant i should send tyler a picture to put on the social media um but they grow pretty quickly mm. they're super hardy mm. um i stick mine outside in the summer so it can get light and rainwater and i yeah. love it and i think i don't know they're Probably not unpopular, but a lot of like the little, the inch plants, the wandering dudes, oh, and yeah, yes. like other ones in that genus, like Calicia, well, so different yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you usually see like the purple form a lot, but there's a lot, mm, like Sabrina. we have some cool, like uh, the green and white, like variegated mm -hmm. ones. And the pink ones. Yes. Which we get in from cute. time to time. I haven't mm -hmm. seen them in a few months, but. But they're really we'll easy to grow. And there's, yeah, just a lot of variety there. Mm -hmm. And super easy to propagate. Yes. Which is also important. Fun. <laughs> also, same with the pencil cactus mm -hmm. um, fire stick. Super easy to prop. So that's always yeah. a good plant to go with because mm -hmm. you can make babies, give them to friends, or, you know, just keep them all and have yeah. tons more plants. Too many plants. Too many plants. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, uh, have you tried growing a dwarf citrus tree indoors? Any recommendations? I mean, I am growing a lemon tree indoors. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, what I found with it indoors right now with the heat, and I heat most of my house with like mm -hmm. a propane fireplace, the soil dries out really fast, so I have to actually water it more right now mm -hmm. than I was in the winter. Um, but as long as you have like a pretty bright area a good window where it can sit it should be just fine yeah light is definitely mm -hmm. really important like yeah south facing windows i unfortunately have not tried that yet because i don't have my windows are okay but not yeah. quite bright enough for something like citrus mine's in like a west like slightly facing south and mm -hmm. it's it's doing great it's growing it's mm -hmm. pushing new growth right now so mm -hmm. it's doing it's doing great inside and then yeah. you know as soon as it gets warm outside and you can pop it outside mm -hmm. in the sun mm -hmm. then they're really gonna shoot off mm -hmm. and be excited about that but yeah and they i mean they're fairly easy as long as you know you can meet like the lighting and water requirements like they'll flower and fruit at pretty much any size yeah so. they will and they smell lovely <laughs> they do i love the smell of lemon flowers yes. yes i have actually have a small orange tree that i've grown from seed from seed yeah. tyler from the grocery store <laughs> uh I think it was a navel orange. Ooh. I'm not sure. Really? That's exactly which one. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's very thorny, the ones with seeds, because you know, most orange trees, they're grafted. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, my uh, lemon tree is really thorny. Yeah. It got me a couple times. Yeah. And I've, I've got a key lime bush also, and it does have some smaller, shorter thorns on it. Mm -hmm. Bigger leaves, too, which is interesting. But both of those, I am overwintering in my garage with a grow light. Oh, nice. okay. And wow. Yeah, we'll we'll cover that next week. But have you got any fruit off of either of those? Um, the lime I I got this year from the nursery here, mm -hmm. and it did flower. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a little bud of it looks like a little fruit bud on it, but that fruit has not grown. Well, so it's trying though, yeah. and that's it's what matters. It's trying its best. It's, it's doing its best, and that's what we're all doing right now. <laughs> yeah, and that's what's important. Yes, yeah, doing our best. Uh, so moving on, I've had two bird's nest ferns and I have failed both. One rotted in the middle, even though I didn't water it in the middle. The other one turned brown in spite of watering. Can you give me some hard and fast rules on a bird's nest fern so I don't fail another one? I mean, with my bird's nest fern, I usually water it from the base or around, which you said you didn't water it in the center. Um, yeah. So that does yeah, sound not a like strange. a bromeliad. Yeah. I think they do, like, they are epiphytes, so I think they probably don't want to be too, too wet. Um, that probably is one of the few ferns you can actually overwater. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I would. Because I would mist mine from time mm -hmm. to time, but yeah. I would usually water again around the plant or in the saucer where I'd mm -hmm. let water sit for like almost a day. Yeah. So it like could really it drink up. it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bottom water. Bottom water. I love that. I know it works really well for a lot of ferns actually. It does. And it works really well for rosemary. Ooh. Just a, a side side tip there. <laughs> um, and then yeah. the second part it was browning. Is that mm -hmm. what you said, Tyler? Um yes. It says um uh, one rotted in the middle, the other one turned brown in spite of watering. The browning could be pot size. It could have been root bound. Yeah. Or mine got brown when I moved it to like lighting that was too low. Mm, yeah. Um, and it, yeah, I got angry. It got angry at me. <laughs> got mad. There so, are yeah. a few without like seeing a picture sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to um, yeah. diagnose that problem. Mm -hmm. So yeah. are they live or was that a question that was sent in? They are live. Yeah. Ooh. Um, so with the one that was browning, like how often were you watering it and what kind of lighting did you have it near? Mm. We'll drink some tea while we yeah. let you. Take your yeah. time typing. Don't feel rushed. Mm -hmm. No one can see you. <laughs> what kind of tea are you drinking? I'm drinking orange and spice. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Caffeine free because I've had too much today. <laughs> Yeah, Laura, I'm I'm gonna move on to another question. But okay. once I once I get your response, um, I'll feed it back to them. Oh yeah. Uh, is there a secret to getting the hen and chicks to make chicks? I haven't had any luck with this. I mean, those are super easy. Yeah. Sunlight um, is mm -hmm. super important with hen and chicks. Mm -hmm. um, they like almost as much direct sunlight as they can get, yeah, I'd really say. Yeah, really full sun to keep mm -hmm. them nice and compact. And then sometimes, I mean, it might just be due for like a little bit of fertilizer in the spring too, 
to just yeah. kind of like push it in that direction. Because mm-hmm. the ones I have, I've had some in pots before, and then I actually have some in ground. The mm-hmm. ones in ground do a lot better um, because they can soak up the nutrients from, you know, being outside and debris falling. And I also fertilize my outdoor garden mm-hmm. um, and it has a lot of sun. So, yeah, room to grow. Yeah, room to grow and good nutrients. That's right. <laughs> Things that are very important when it comes to plants. Yes. Too true. Okay, Laura responded, it wasn't great lighting and watering was somewhat frequent, but it wasn't completely dry. Mm. I'm also growing a lemon tree indoors and it's thriving. I have two lemons (laughs) almost ready and I've already harvested two. Congratulations. Yay! That's so exciting. (laughs) I'm proud of you. We're proud of you here at Bates Nursery. So it sounds like with the bird's nest fern, um, maybe it was getting too much water and without that lighting, that combo, the low light, too much water, if it does stay soggy. Mm and it doesn't have that light coming mm-hmm. in, um, that is going to cause damage, root rot, and brown those leaves. Because mine, one of mine that I have mm-hmm. um, is in my bedroom. It doesn't get a ton of light, but I do let that one dry completely out between watering, um, and it's doing fine. Yeah, mine did the best when it was actually getting some direct morning sun, so not like super strong sunlight, but still a little bit of direct sun. Mm-hmm. And how um, often were you watering that one? Or like, how were you keeping your soil? About that? like once a week, I'd like thoroughly soak it and it would dry out like, not completely, but probably like halfway, mm-hmm. like just before the leaves start drooping a little. And, and that is a good thing water. that we've talked mm-hmm. about before. A lot of plants will let you know when they need water. Mm-hmm. They'll look a little sad, and there's no damage. They're just kind of yeah. like, oh, I feel faint. Like when you feel <laughs> overheated when you go outside, and you're just like, I just need to lay down yeah. on this grass for five minutes, <laughs> <laughs> which happens here during the summer. Um, let's see. We got a Facebook question. Uh, oh, how often do you get in variegated varieties of some of these plants that you have here, like a prayer plant? I don't think I've seen variegated prayer plants. Mm-mm. Um, yeah, as far as like, I mean, anything we can get variegated, we do. Um, They're just a little harder to come by. Yeah, and it kind of depends on like just what our growers and our suppliers have. But um, I know some things that are super in demand, like the variegated like monsteras and things like that. Probably not, not gonna, gonna happen, those. not for a while at least. Um, we do get the variegated hoyas, mm-hmm. and from time to time, when we can yeah. get those, and we've also gotten the variegated ficus. Um, yeah, the rubber trees, which did go fast. Mm-hmm. A lot of the times, when we do get those variegated items, um, they sell quickly. Normally, yeah. we get our houseplant shipments in Tuesday, mm-hmm. Thursday, um, mm-hmm. when we're up and running a little yeah. bit more. A little less frequent now. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but whenever we can, we get variegated stuff. And we usually, Tyler back here mm-hmm. and Anora, um, we usually post those pretty pretty soon after we get them in. Yeah. And as soon the as rare I lay stuff eyes on them. Yeah. Keep an eye on that Instagram. So once you <laughs> see it, come in and get it. Or web order. Yeah, web order. Mm-hmm. We yep. do offer that, the no touch, mm-hmm. no contact. Um, curbside. curbside pickup. Uh, we can set it aside for you. Mm-hmm. You can come pick it up within a week or so, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um. Another question coming in here. What plants would work well for an indoor green wall? Ooh, indoor green wall. There's quite a few. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've seen it done a lot of ways. Like, mm-hmm. definitely a lot of like ferns. Um, if you're doing it, you know, something with a lot of water. Yeah. And again, the ferns that we were talking about mm-hmm. earlier, the foot ferns and paws that have um, the legs coming out would yeah, be super so cool. Spread with nicely. That with that wall and they would be happy because they would have somewhere to kind of grow from instead of just in a pot Mm -hmm. where they're going to be bound and just grow over the side yeah they'll be able to drape i mean you could even do like yeah pothos or like the trailing philodendrons little heart leaf ones those are like good low light they can kind of grow together Mm -hmm. yeah you can and you know you can i like to pin up like the vines on the wall so it's not you know just a little hanging planter and then like the vines doing Mm -hmm. doing their thing you could also go with a succulent Wall. I mean, you'd have to oh, kind yeah. of choose, like, if you want ferns, if you want vines, like, something yeah. within the same kind of Based on your lighting, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you can see the succulent. Oh, yeah. move it back a little bit towards yeah. y'all. Ooh, look at her go. Yeah, this is a string or fish string hooks? Of, no, I think this is the string of banana. No, it is the fish hooks. Fish hooks. <laughs> it's kind of a weird one, though. Mm-hmm. It's almost like a mix. Um, This one would be great for a living wall. Um, And there's so many different ways to do those. Mm -hmm. So depending on the kind you do, I mean, you could have trailers 
and then you could have suckle- succulents, <laughs> succulents that kind of grow up a little bit more and then yeah. the weight's going to bring them down. Um, but again, the most important thing with that is you're going to want to get stuff that um, depending on the lighting mm-hmm. um, and also has kind of similar watering exactly. requirements. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, would lime do as well as the lemon tree? Also, what is the pink and green stripe plant on the front left? Oh, probably that. Guy. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here, I'll slide him over. Ooh. Oh. So this is one of our prayer plants, a Calathea ornata, or pinstripe prayer plant. Um, very... Oh, I love them. I, I love, love them. them. They're super cute. Mm-hmm. They can be a little finicky, especially right now. Mm-hmm. Um, they like a lot of humidity. Mm-hmm. And so a question I get a lot um, mm-hmm. is like the leaves start turning kind of brown. Mm-hmm. So a good rule of thumb with these things that are in this family, mm-hmm. you're going to want to have a humidifier. And they like to be at least like 50% humidity level, mm-hmm. um, especially in the winter because your heat's on and your house is going to dry out. And we do have quite a few of these right now yeah. they're all like pet friendly and they're mm-hmm. good at, in like indirect light too so it's usually easy to find a, a good spot for them at mm-hmm. your house and this one mm-hmm. is a little bit easier than some of the others i'd say yeah. and it's so cool i don't know if I you know. can see how glossy the leaves are too with those shiny. pink stripes <laughs> Ooh, yeah i love anything with pink on it i do too <laughs> same just slide it this way Oh, and also, (laughs) just while we have this out here, we did just recently get in a lot of new pottery. This is one of them. I already bought one (laughs) because I love it so much. It's got my cast iron plant in it. Um, So if you need new pottery for some of your plants or you're coming down to Mm -hmm. get more house plants, um, we do have a lot of new things to go with that and a lot more coming in. Yes. We've been keeping busy. (laughs) Most (laughs) deaf. And cold. Yep. A little bit of both. Um, let's see. Uh, what about the lime doing uh, as well as the lemon tree? I think they're probably about the same. I'd say they're about the same. I've grown a lime tree before and I eventually had to just give it to someone because it, it got too wild. Um, too big. Oh. <laughs> too big. Ooh. But really growing it, at least for me, it was the same. Um, I'd fertilize it, keep it in sun when it was inside in the winter, um, and keep it watered. Keep forgetting to unmute my mic. Tyler. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, should houseplants be repotted on a regular basis? If not, uh, what would be the clues a plant needs a new home? That's so, a good one. That is a great mm-hmm. question. Um, I repot mine quite frequently. Yeah. I usually, it kind of depends on the plant, but like usually I'll do like once a year, maybe every couple years. With my um, cacti, I let them stay for a little yeah. bit longer. Cacti and succulents can usually stay in the same pot for a while just because they're typically not growing as fast. And because they like to get drier in between, mm-hmm. they're okay being a little bit pot bound. But for plants that like more water, a lot of water, like peace lilies are one that I, I really notice like when they need repotting is like they just dry out really fast. Yeah, drying out, mm. the leaves will start to yellow a lot, mm-hmm. um, which sometimes is a sign of watering too. So you'll have to mm-hmm. kind of look for it. A good rule of thumb if you have like a plastic pot mm-hmm. or it's a plastic pot like sitting in a cachet, if you pick it up, you can kind of feel the pot and if it doesn't move too easily it's mm-hmm. usually a good sign that it's yeah. pretty root bound or sometimes like if you get like a lot of roots like circling around the top of your pot or if they're like poking out of the bottom mm-hmm. um, which a fiddle leaf will do that this one's yeah not doing that ficus yet, but... like to grow roots really quick but yeah basically it's like you know it's okay to leave them a little bit pot bound if it's something that likes to be on the drier side or dry out a little bit more But if it's, you know, the growth is slowing or it starts, you know, looking like it's having a hard time getting nutrients, like it's getting a little more yellow, maybe then it's time to repot. Usually I'd recommend waiting till spring. Yeah, until it's warm. Mm -hmm. Um, Just because that's when a plant's naturally going to kind of start growing again anyway. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, spring, early summer is usually a good time to repot or you can, you know, divide it, split it. Yeah. And uh, someone says, when you say repot, Mm -hmm. you mean moving to a bigger pot, right? Correct. Moving to a larger pot. Mm -hmm. Usually you'd only want to go up no more than four inches Mm -hmm. um, unless that plant was like super root bound. And you're like, no, I need something bigger. Mm -hmm. Because if you go too large, what's going to happen is it's just going to retain too much moisture Mm -hmm. because it's going to be a lot of soil in that pot. Yeah. Some plants, like when I repot, like probably my, like a snake plant would be a good example. Like for these guys, it's like, 
they'll keep spreading, but they have individual little shoots. So when I would go to repot a snake plant like mine at home, actually take it out, kind of split it up a little mm -hmm. bit just to make it smaller and then just put it back in that same pot with new soil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they love that new soil. Too. Yeah. They grow really, yeah, they grow all happy afterwards. They do. And you, <laughs> you can tell like when you repot them a lot, um, they'll get a lot healthier. Mm -hmm. And that question too, um, they'll tell you by the growth will be stunted. Like mm -hmm. all of a sudden it'll just stop growing and not a change of season. Um, you know, if it's still warm, it just won't be doing much. Mm -hmm. That's a really good indicator. Yeah. Uh, one from Instagram here. Uh, my fiddly fiddle leaf fig is faded and leggy. Any ideas? Ooh, it could yeah. be a few different things. Um, if it doesn't have enough light, it's going to mm -hmm. get leggy because it's going to be reaching for sunlight and trying mm -hmm. to find that. Um, yeah, and that's going like to make it like leggy and kind of floppy. Mm -hmm. but yeah, that's probably lighting faded. Could be lighting, could be a nutrient issue yeah, maybe. You might need to go ahead and fertilize. Or like, I mean, faded to, I know we talked about spider mites earlier, but if it's kind of checked for that, like, a little bit of webbing too because mm -hmm, yeah look under yeah. that leaf and it's pretty easy to find it on the fiddle leaves because mm -hmm. those leaves are so nice and big but yeah they um, but do look near what you know looks like the veins and the leaf is mm -hmm. where they're going to be because yeah that can make leaves look kind of faded and now would be spider mites love low humidity so winter is the time to mm -hmm. really check your plants mm -hmm. and it'll give you something to do inside mm -hmm. speaking of humidity a question from Brittany uh on facebook I'm a novice here, but some of the plant groups I'm in talk about humidity trays for some plants who really need it through mm -hmm. the winter. What's a humidity tray? How does it work? Do you recommend them? I do recommend yeah, them. I, I like actually them. use them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I do with mine, I just get like a saucer or you yeah. can even get a tray if you want to do a few different mm -hmm. pots in there. I'll get like, yeah, one big round saucer mm -hmm. um, so I can group different plants together on it and you would fill it with pebbles. Mm -hmm. um, or marbles or something like that. So the purpose of that, you can fill that tray with water, but not, not have your like plants sitting, sitting in there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you'll just put them on top of those rocks, mm -hmm. not fill it up above the rock line. You want to mm -hmm. keep it below that rock line and you can set your plants on top. Yeah. But that way it's like, as that water evaporates, it'll increase the humidity like around a particular plant. Mm -hmm. Um, if you have a lot of plants or like a lot of humidity loving plants, a humidifier is going to be a little bit more efficient. But if it's, you know, just a couple, like here and there, the humidity trays are a great way to do that. Yeah. Cool. Uh, what do you do for spider mites? I know we talked about them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Honestly, like step one, rinse them. Like all, I, I mean, this time of year, I just put my plants in my shower. Yeah. <laughs> and I just and like spray, them, spray off. them off as mm -hmm. many as I can. Um, I know I was reading a blog the other day uh, about someone using a lint roller. To help oh. remove spider mites, I was like, "That is brilliant." That is because yeah, it's fun, mm -hmm. and that way you know you don't have to do the whole shower thing. But yeah, lint roller is nice and gentle, and it helps get those mm -hmm. little critters off your leaves. Um, yeah. and then yeah, follow up with like neem oil mm -hmm. or insecticidal soap. Um, and you probably will need to repeat that treatment like a at least once times, a week. Yeah. yeah, about once a week, and yeah, just keep an eye out. Um, cause they can be a little sneaky, but yeah, usually it's like, especially if it's, you know, humidity loving plants, a lot of times increasing humidity too can help, um, the plant like fight back against the spider mites too. So just giving them a little more humidity can help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That good old humidity. Good. Humidity. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, most tropical plants, they would prefer humidity between like 40 and 60%. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, I mean, yeah, our houses get dry in the winter. Like, I think I measured my humidity last year. It was at, like, 15 to 20 percent. Oh, yeah, mine's which super is, low, which my yeah. cacti love. Yeah, cacti love it. But, yeah, a lot of the, the tropical guys do not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have so many plants that need humidity. I keep some in my laundry room. Yeah, laundry room, And they're bathroom. loving it. I don't even have a humidifier in there. But they're doing great. It's naturally. like a party in there for those plants. <laughs> Plant party in the laundry room. That's right. <laughs> What's the best care for crotons? Is it croton? Oh, croton? Oh, oh, crotons. Yes. They, they can be kind of tricky. So they are that like weird balance. They like really bright light. Mm -hmm. um, and they 
oh, they need like water, but like but not, not a too ton much. of water. But they don't want to get too dry either. So it's like it, they're sassy. Yeah, they are really sassy. But yeah, so it's like I'd say probably what let them dry out like halfway, a little yeah, more. Yeah, I would dry like, it out a little bit so more. Almost so they're drooping. Mm-hmm. And they'll start to lose leaves down low mm-hmm. um, if they do have a big problem with watering. Yeah. So yeah, the leaf loss, it can be too much water or mm-hmm. too little water. And with those, I wouldn't water it all the way through. Yeah, maybe just I would just give lightly. it like enough water to kind of saturate into the top like half, especially mm-hmm. if you only let it dry out halfway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but definitely use like a good well draining mix. Like you could probably even use like a cactus mix. Yeah, too. or just add more mm-hmm. perlite to your um, indoor potting mix. Yes. Yeah, she's yeah. saying she's lost a few. Oh, lost yeah. a few mm-hmm. leaves or a few no, plants. No, crotons, I believe. Yeah. They are, I mean, they're, yeah, they're pretty tricky. I haven't grown one in probably 10 years. My parents had a huge one and they didn't do anything to it. It was just in a window. You know, some plants <laughs> just like people. Yeah. I know. Like you'll you'll find a plant that you're just like, I could do any like my fiddle mm-hmm. leaf, I could literally do anything to it yeah. and it won't die. <laughs> well, that's incredible. Yeah. Sorry, I got yeah. tickled. I've been almost yeah, I haven't been trying to kill it, but it just yeah. stays around. Just well, testing the boundaries, yeah. huh? That's testing right. Testing the boundaries. But yeah, but crotons definitely watering is probably like the the biggest the culprit. Biggest culprit. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, let's see another Instagram one what plants do you recommend for low light also could you suggest a climbing one or an ivy ivies I mean they could adjust but they're gonna get leggy like we were talking Mm -hmm. about um, with the fiddle leaf because they do like brighter light um, and they're gonna be reaching for light Mm -hmm. but yeah my favorite like low light trailing plant is probably the heart leaf philodendrons Mm. those guys are pretty tolerant I do have yeah. one in my kitchen on a shelf where it gets pretty much no sunlight mm-hmm. and it's doing great. Yeah, but those, they, oh, I love them. I have three different ones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I have them like one, my Brazil is like in a north window and it's thriving. So like very indirect light all day um, and it's loving it. Yeah, and I'd say it would do better than ivy mm-hmm. um, with low light. Yeah. Other good low light plants are like, yeah, the Sansevieria or uh, ZZ plants mm-hmm. are really good with and low peace light. Peace lilies. Peace too. lilies. Oh, Chinese evergreens. Aquamina. Oh, yeah. Those are great. Those are kind of like all like bushier plants. Yeah, taller, you know, not trailing, yeah. but, but low light. Yeah. And pothos is like pretty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, those are really adaptable and grow pretty fast. Yeah. I prefer the philodendrons. Me too. They're a little bit, they're a little tidier. They are tidier. (laughs) And they have those heart-shaped leaves. Yes. Mm. Valentine plant. (laughs) Speaking of hearts, but not really, my (laughs) shamrock plant has completely died in the middle and is all droopy and sad looking after really filling out this summer. Should I just be patient and wait for summer again? Or is there anything I can do to make it come back? So we were actually just talking about Mm -hmm. those plants um, before we got started. In the winter, they do just get sad. Like, that's kind of just something they do. They do have a, like, it's like a dormant period Mm -hmm. almost. So I'll usually, like, kind of cut mine back. Like, they have these little pine cone shaped tubers. Yeah, you can pull them up and Mm -hmm. separate them and make a lot more. Yeah. But yeah, I'll just kind of trim the leaves back, keep it a little bit drier for a month or two mm-hmm. and then resume watering and it and comes stick right it out back. In the sun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Thanks, Tyler. Yeah, you're welcome. Why are my calathea leaves getting crispy at the tipsies? Ah. Oh. So that's what we touched on just a little bit when we were talking about this guy earlier, probably a humidity um yeah. issue. But yeah, if you are using a humidifier and you're still getting brown leaf tips, um you might check on you know how root bound it is they Mm -hmm. are pretty sensitive about like minerals or salts from like fertilizer building up in the soil so if you've got good humidity but you're still getting brown uh like brown leaf tips check on the soil and make sure there's no like um you know extra fertilizer like kind of a salt build up yeah give it a good Good give it a good flush Mm -hmm. yes (laughs) we've got one from our own anora mcgarry (gasps) anora yeah um (laughs) <laughs> maybe it's a two-parter let's see how i can phrase this uh so why does my peace lily hate me those bad oh. boys are supposed to be easy mine's all crispy and brown and hasn't put out new flowers or leaves in ages 
Anora, are you watering it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, in all caps. Anora, is it in too much sunlight? What kind of sunlight is it getting? That Vermont sunlight. That sweet Vermont sunlight. Indirect. Sun. Does Vermont have sun? I just kidding. I know. I know there's no, sun. It hides behind the mountains it up does. there. It does. It's yeah. so cold there. I hope you're staying warm right now. Mm. Yeah. Oh, what's your uh, advice on? Indirect light, yeah. Yeah, indirect light. She well, says I'm about to throw it in the snow. Oh. <laughs> I get it. I did that with my prayer plant. <laughs> Sometimes plants just don't work for you. You can talk about them all you want, mm -hmm. but they're just yeah. not going to do it. It might be a fertilizer thing. like Yeah, either fertilizer or like even like humidity, too, because like peace lilies are a little more tropical if it's getting really crispy. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure, yeah, Vermont is cold, so you're yeah, probably running the heat. How do you heat your heat. house out there, Honora? A fire in the fire. middle because it's so cold? Wood. Wood. So you're, you are yeah. heating it with fire, so it's going to be drying it out just like my house. Um, Humidity. Yeah. Try. Yeah. Maybe so try maybe a humidity, humidity tray. Yeah. See what happens. And keep us updated. Yeah. A humidity tray before you throw it in the snow. Yeah. Don't give up on it yet. Also, here's the two parter. How do you keep your lip gloss cool? How do you keep your lip gloss popping? <laughs> lip smackers all the way. Well, I don't actually have on lip smackers today. I'm wearing this. It's yeah. kind of got a red tint. Yeah. Kind of Valentine's-y uh, Christmas in between mm -hmm. the seasons. Um, got some sparkles in it. I don't know if you can see it in the lighting. Seasonal lip question, gloss. Anora. But usually I'm a lip smackers girl, which you can get all flavors. My favorite is cotton candy. Ooh. My favorite's the grape. Grape soda, man. No, oh, I had a Fanta grape, one. Yeah, grape Fanta. But it would turn my lips purple and I'd get it all over my mask. <laughs> <laughs> and then all over my face. I haven't thought about lip gloss and yeah. mask during, issues yeah during um our covid19 mask times i have opted for bird's bees she's a more natural gal. all natural yeah. i it's like not the as sparkles. glittery yeah, yeah the sparkles no one cool. can see it but i know it's there <laughs> well until we get on camera yeah. lights camera lip gloss and then it happens then it happens mm -hmm. all right i hope we answered your question in yes way. i'm steering this train right back onto the rails as fast as possible <laughs> How do you make sure a plant is pest free before you bring it home from a garden center? Using your eyes. I mean, that's really the only yeah. way, like inspecting it, looking into those little crevices, mm -hmm. looking for like, you know, when we were talking about mm -hmm. spider mites earlier, yeah. looking for like, you know, very small webbing, mm -hmm. um, little white bugs for the mealy bugs. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and like some, I mean, honestly, like a lot of them like aren't a big deal. Like if it's a hardier plant, I honestly just give it like a spritz with like neem or like insecticidal soap. Mm -hmm just in case there's anything i've missed um or you know you can do the quarantine like we were talking about earlier just set it aside and like keep an eye on it for those first couple weeks just in case there's anything you know developing or yeah because a lot of places too you'll yeah. get plants in from growers mm -hmm. that might have something that yeah. you know the nursery doesn't know about yeah and there's like and some of it's just so small like it's hard to tell like until it you know gets big enough to where you notice there's a problem yeah and then if it's <clears> sitting <throat> amongst buds. all of your 200 house plants like we both have <laughs> that becomes problematic when yes. you just say oh here's a new friend let me put it in the middle of everything yeah don't um, do that so yeah even if you don't have quarantine space just mm -hmm. putting it on like you know the other side of your room would mm -hmm. be helpful but just pick that plant up and look it through you can look at the mm -hmm. soil line um mm -hmm. i would just give it a good yeah Good, Good thorough over. inspection. Mm -hmm. <laughs>